Amnesty International issued its annual report today on the state of human rights in the world and Spain and its crackdown on Catalan independence is in the spotlight. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Disproportionate use of police violence to stop the independence referendum, attacks on the rights to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly of Catalan independence supporters, excessive pre-trial detention of Catalan leaders, all these have been highlighted by Amnesty International in its annual report. The document paints a grim picture of the state of human rights in the world, and Spain is no exception. We'll speak with the director of the organization in Europe to understand the gravity of the situation. And stay with us because we'll bring you the latest on the controversy surrounding an exhibit featuring Catalan leaders as political prisoners, which was removed from an art festival in Madrid, coming up. Last year, on October 1st, more than 2 million Catalans voted in an independence referendum in defiance of the Spanish government. In response, police used violence to shut down polling stations. According to the Catalan government, more than 1,000 people were injured, yet the colonel in charge of the police operation denied in court today that there were any police charges. In contrast, Amnesty International has issued its annual report on human rights and highlighted the excessive use of force by Spanish police. Disproportionate and excessive. These are two of the most widely used words by Amnesty International to describe Spain's actions to stop Catalan independence. The organization today published its annual report on the state of human rights in the world, and it concluded Spain's attacks on freedom of expression and peaceful assembly, as well as police violence against peaceful demonstrators during the independence referendum last October. The document paints a grim picture of the state of human rights in the world, and includes the case of the two jailed Catalan leaders, Jordi Sánchez and Jordi Cuixart. The grassroots activists entered prison on October the 16th for their role in promoting pro-independence demonstrations, and they've been held behind bars for more than four months. The document also mentioned the excessive use of force by police officers. More specifically, the report includes the use of blank cartridges and rubber bullets, which seriously injured one person and caused him to lose the sight in one eye. But not everybody thinks that police officers went too far. Today, the colonel responsible for the police operation to thwart the referendum appeared as a witness in court. Diego Pérez de los Cobos denied that there were any police raids on October the 1st and stressed that all action taken was intended to enforce judicial orders. In order to have a deeper insight into Amnesty's report, we will speak now with the organization's director in Europe, Gauri von Gulik. Hello, Mrs. Von Gulik, and thanks for being with us. Hello. So what are the main findings of Amnesty's annual report looking specifically at the situation in Catalonia? So Amnesty International has done uh, research into uh, several things around the, the events uh, of, of September, October, and since then uh, in Catalonia and in Spain more generally. And uh, our findings are, are basically three uh, points. One uh, is excessive use of force by the police in Catalonia in October. Um, that's really important and something that really stuck with me personally was this uh, story also of a woman who was hit in the face by national police while she was simply waiting peacefully. Um, and another story of a person who lost uh, sight in their right eye because of use of rubber bullets. Uh, so we have documented some very serious incidents of excessive use of force uh, in the course of, uh, of that period, early October. That's one. The second issue that we are looking into uh, is broadly all the fair trial problems. So um, learning while these trials go on, both of uh, community leaders as well as politicians, you know, what are the, the crimes um, that they're alleged to have committed? What are the actual accusations and how are courts applying fair trial standards in those cases? So we're looking into that very um, uh, um, thoroughly. Um, and as I said, many categories of fit cases, so both against police officers, against, uh, of course, the political leaders, against uh, the civil society leaders. Uh, and really what is most extreme in our view is, um, is this excessive uh, and disproportionate uh, pre-trial detention, uh, in particular of the Geordies, because um, there is no justification for it. And, and just, you know, two weeks ago, there was a renewed, uh, you know, continuation of that detention. So, so this is something we're, we're continuing to follow. And as things come up, we will continue to document it as we can. Um, and finally, the third uh, category is, is really specific to, uh, to the Geordies, um, which is really a broad attack on freedom of expression in Spain. 
Uh, and that is something that we're looking into in a much wider sense. So the use of certain laws in Spain uh, to curb freedom of expression uh, in the context of counterterrorism work. Um, this is, goes well beyond uh, the situation in Catalonia. So we are very interested in documenting this also outside that region uh, and more in general, how Spain is curbing this very fundamental right. Um, and that is also part of a larger trend in Europe. The report states that the imprisonment of Jordi Sanchez and Jordi Couchard is disproportionate, but Amnesty does not consider them to be political imprisoners. Why is that? Well, this is a bit of a, a tricky uh, categorization because, you know, Amnesty International bases itself on, on international human rights law. And political prisoners, of course, have a literal meaning, as in prisoners in the context of a political situation. Uh, but it's also often used in the media as a sort of a term that means more than that. And we don't use it in that sense. So we can't use it here uh, for many reasons. Um, I, I think that it's quite clear that these are people who are imprisoned uh, in the context of a political conflict. Right. And so we've talked about this a lot. So it's clear that this is excessive uh, in this case. We haven't found justifications as far as we can see. Uh, for this kind of pretrial detention. And we also flagged, and this is important, um, that overall this use of pretrial detention, so just keeping people locked up uh, without really clear grounds or reasons or justifications for it is much more dangerous uh, also in a broader sense. It's not just about these individuals. It sends a very scary message that, you know, while you think you may have a right to protest, you may have a right uh, to peacefully organize, um, the state tells you something different. And that's what makes especially the civil society leaders so um, so vulnerable, because that sense of chilling message and it's very dangerous for uh, for civil society and the health of civil society more broadly in Spain. Uh, so that is for us really a, an important priority to make sure that those people who have a right to fully peacefully protest, to organize and to do it in a way, of course, that doesn't harm others. Um, that they should be able to do so and that they're not punished excessively um, in the course of their actions. So that's a very large concern for us and we were very outspoken about this issue before. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Are jail Catalan leaders political prisoners? It depends on who you ask. But it is clear that this is a highly controversial issue, not only in Catalonia, but also in Spain. A contemporary art festival in Madrid removed on Wednesday an exhibit featuring Catalan leaders as political prisoners. The decision sparked outrage. Today, organisers apologised and explained that they did not want to censor the artwork, yet they did not back down from their decision. But people who want to see the piece by artist Santiago Sierra might not have to wait long. A Catalan businessman acquired the work for €80,000 and was already looking for a location. One of the possibilities is the Museum of Lleida, and this does not seem to be an accidental choice. Last December, a series of religious artworks were relocated from the Catalan Museum to their original whereabouts in the municipality of Sichena, in the Spanish region of Aragon. Yet Lleida is not the only Catalan town willing to host the exhibit on political prisoners. The mayor of Girona is also happy to welcome it. We will also hear what the lead of the main unionist party in Catalonia, Inés Arimadas, thinks about this controversy. Yo creo que el arte, el arte tiene que ser libre y el arte, desde luego, pues, pues no tiene que tener este tipo de, de problemas. Eh, desde luego, la, la exposición ha explicado en un comunicado, creo que además fue un acuerdo entre las partes y, por tanto, solo podemos decir eso. Nosotros no lo hubiéramos hecho, nosotros creemos que el arte debe ser libre, pero en cualquier caso es un acuerdo privado. Y, por tanto, nosotros a disposición desde la ciudad siempre lluitar en favor de las libertades y a criticar cualquier eh, tipo de censura o de conculcación de cualquier derecho fundamental en el ámbito de la Europa democrática. Moving on, the annual Mobile World Congress kicks off next Monday and security will play a key role at this year's event with new measures in place. For the first time ever, the Catalan police will be employing the use of drones as part of their security programme. This will allow them to receive images and videos in real time in order to respond accordingly. Plans have been adapted due to the high risk of a terror attack. Currently the level is set at four out of five. Qualified officers will take control of the drones, making sure that airspace regulations are complied with. La evolució de les alertes en aquest cas terroristes doncs et, et permeten o t'obliguen més que et permeten a evolucionar 
en els dispositius de seguretat. Des del dron es transmetran imatges online, imatges en directe, que aniran directament al centre de coordinació que s'ha establert per aquest congrés i, per tant, poder valorar de manera immediata qualsevol incidència. In business news, the planned high-speed train link between Girona and Barcelona airports, which was announced by the Spanish government, will be positive for the future of both facilities. The creation of the connection will not only guarantee the future of Girona Airport, but also help form one of the best airport partnerships in Europe, according to the president of the facility, Luis Salas. As part of the massive investment into the development of the airport, millions of euros will also go to the expansion of the passenger terminal as well. The high-speed link alone will cost around 55 million euros. As it stands, the airport is mostly used by Ryanair, but in the summer, other airlines such as Jet2 can be seen on the runway. Salas is convinced, however, that these developments will attract more companies to the second largest airport in Catalonia. If there is someone deserving the title of the founding father of the Catalan language, it's Pompeu Fabra, at least the modern standard that is used in schools, the media and institutions these days. This year, Catalonia has made a point of honouring the 150th anniversary of this major historical figure. While you might know of the University Pompeu Fabra, do you know who the university is named after? It was the Catalan linguist Pompeu Fabra, and this year Catalonia is celebrating the 150th anniversary of his birth. Pompeu Fabra year was launched this week in an event at which Catalan actors read and performed text praising Fabra's work. He's considered the father of modern Catalan, as he set a new standard for the language. Yet, the event also served as a rallying cry for the defense of the Catalan language. Que l'any sigui memòria, però sobretot que l'any sigui estímul. Estímul per enfortir socialment el català. Estímul per a l'aspiració de plenitud de la llengua. Politics was involved in the launch. The Catalan Parliament speaker defended the long-standing policy that makes Catalan the working language in schools in Catalonia, after the Spanish government has recently questioned it. La nostra escola és una gran eina de cohesió social i, a més a més, forma part del gran consens polític de país. Pompeu Fabra is a major figure in modern Catalan history. He published his famous Diccionari General de la Llengua Catalana in the 30s, which was later adopted as an official reference book for the Catalan language. The Fabra Year activities will feature such things as articles, talks, itineraries, exhibitions, publications and documentaries, all dedicated to the celebrated linguist and his work. That's all from us today, but if you watched our show yesterday, you'll know that the circus has come to town, the Gold Elephant International Circus Festival in the northern city of Girona. It's taking place until next Monday and has brought some world-class acts to perform under the big top. Check it out here and see you tomorrow.